and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're playing with a deck I call Cantrip Phoenix, and I'll explain all of what I mean. So this is Arclight Phoenix. If you have been living under a rock, you may have missed that this card is now taking Magic Arena and Magic Online by storm. You seem to run into it everywhere. It's a Flying Haste 3-2 creature for four mana, which isn't particularly scary, but at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, Arclight Phoenix, return Arclight Phoenix from the graveyard to the battlefield. So as long as you play three spells, it comes back at the beginning of combat on your turn. Then you can attack with it because it has haste, or you can block with it because there might be something huge you want to block. So it this card, uh, once you can get it in the graveyard, and especially when you can get several of them in the graveyard, keeps coming back over and over to kill planeswalkers and deal damage to players and chump block Tempest Jins and do whatever you might need done. And in the meantime, you get to do some fun stuff, which is cast spells. Anytime you're casting three or more spells a turn, it feels fun. So if those spells also draw cards and progress you towards another game plan, like say giant drakes uh then you get a very fun deck which a lot of people are enjoying playing and uh, has become something serious you have to think about in the meta so even if you don't like this deck you should learn how to battle it okay um cantrips so i call this cantrip phoenix that term comes from back around ice age i think urza's bauble or portent were some of the first uh, cards that started being referred to as cantrips and the idea is that they are cheap cards usually one mana or zero that don't have a huge effect such as scry one but say draw a card which means that they're a very low cost way to make your deck essentially smaller we run 60 card decks to maximize the odds of drawing what we want to draw if you run some cantrips in the deck it's like playing a 56 card deck but if you can get some benefit off of cantrips such as prowess triggers or giant drakes or free phoenixes phenai i say phenai i know it's wrong i think it sounds cool um then cantrips become very good now there's another version of this deck and i do think it might be better i'm gonna be totally honest about that i'm running today the version i like to run there is a version with uh electromancer goblin electromancer which makes spells cheaper and it runs slightly more expensive cantrip style cards and relies on the electromancer's discount to make them good cards like discovery and cards like radical idea i think that deck is fine i just really miss the explosiveness that i get from a deck like this that fills the graveyard for one mana without relying on an electromancer that could die and i love i'm not saying this is the right number i love maximize velocity in this deck i just try to put together Drake Velocity Combo, I run a very, very low land count because I'm running all these cantrips to try to hit my lands. And I try to put together combos with Maximize, Velocity, and Drakes as quickly as possible. This deck just tries to race. The other builds of the deck are more flexible. We'll probably do them on the channel at some point and show you what I mean. But this is a straight up racing deck. You just want to play huge Drakes and smash with them as quickly as possible. It feels like a crazy combo deck in that way. So that's why I enjoyed this version of the deck, which I call Cantrip Phoenix. All right, let's get into the games. I hope you enjoy them. Okay, this hand is pretty sweet. We can do some stuff. We got a Crash Through, a Tormenting Voice, an Enigma Drake, two Phoenix. I think it's an easy keep. So let's give it a shot. I'm likely to play the crash through right away because I need to draw into chart of course more ways to discard the second phoenix. So plus we needed another land anyway to play the Enigma Drake. So we definitely need to start the party. Warlord's Fury discarding Arclight Phoenix. Please don't spell pierce me. That'd be crazy. And suddenly we're Phoenix flooded. It's getting me a little nervous. We may have to cast them the hard way. Our opponent might be on a very similar plan. In fact, a very, very similar plan as they start the game almost the precisely the same way. Let's launch an Enigma Drake. So many sulfur falls. It's like that sound effect will never stop. 
Our opponent with an Electromancer. And I think the best thing they could have here is a Lava Coil. Another chart, of course. Do they have another Phoenix to discard? That's what I'm wondering now. Nope. A-Land. Okay, well, we have three spells, but we don't have three mountains. I think the best line is going to be to play the Phoenix and attack. I don't like letting my opponent keep an Electromancer, but I like getting aggressive and forcing them to react to me as soon as possible. If they have a Crackling Drake here, the sizing is a 2-4. That's not too terrible. The uh, Steam Vents enters the battlefield tapped, so not willing to pay life. Let's see how they can make use of their mana this turn. Of course, Goblin Electromancer wants to get in for some damage. But that means Phoenix is not coming back, and our opponent's holding up mana. Some kind of a shock lightning strike shenanigan here. I'll deploy another bird. Let's see what happens. I'm winning the Phoenix count. Does the opponent have an answer? They're pointing something somewhere, but zapping the Phoenix is not what you want to be doing, as it just comes back the next turn. But you do what you have to do when you're taking such a beatdown. And is that my opponent's only play? It is. They must be back building spells, hoping to bring back some Phoenix power this turn. This is a big one. Let's see what they can do. There's a Drake. Goblin Electromancer getting busy. And we draw a crash through. Well, I think I need to try to chain some of these because if I get enough of them, I get back the other Phoenix. So I definitely want to play the Warlord's Fury because it means my Enigma Drake can attack no matter what with first strike. And there is a mountain. We could double shock face and I think that wins the game. Our opponent would need a lot of good tricks to get around that. And hit, hit, Phoenix, Phoenix, bird, bird. Game over. So the opponent's on the play. This is a pretty slow hand on the draw with no removal. I don't love it, but I don't feel that mulliganing is a good play for this either. The less cards you have with this deck, the harder things get. Here's an opt. Here an opt, there an opt. But I'd rather not spend another mana to try to keep getting deeper. All right, well, we draw a Drake and a Phoenix. What do you think? Will our opponent counter this? Countering the draw twos is one way that a lot of decks choose to fight this deck. End step. I mean, you could have done this any time in the last three phases. It doesn't have to be the end step. All right, lightning strike face. Interesting. So we're some aggressive deck, or we're just a control deck who only plays one way. Just thinking. Um, whether or not to hold my drakes back in like obvious counterspelly situations, but that lightning strike to the face, it kind of tells a story, right? Like, is this really a counter deck? 
I've decided I'm going to chart a course though instead. If that gets countered, maybe it opens a lane for the Drake. Drop off maximize velocity. Show him what's up. And I'm going to play this tapped and save my spells. Alright, land go. So we could try to hit them with the maximized Drake, but I don't think that will work at all. I think that will fail miserably. So instead, uh, best to run some cantrips, get back a Phoenix, and try to pressure our opponent that way. Cantrips, I don't know why exactly they have that name, which is weird. I was definitely around when the first few were introduced, but it's basically spells that for a very cheap cost also draw a card. Sure. Um, I'm really happy about that. Ooh, can't discard that. If it was one higher, I guess the opponent was smarter than me. If that Crasher had resolved, we could have, like, discarded to a maximized velocity. No, we can't. Actually, we can't. We didn't have a creature to target, so nothing to be sad about. It's the legend of the phoenix. Dun, 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 dun. There's Teferi. Why am I not surprised? Sorry, I'm late. What does Teferi want to do? Draw cards. Sorry. So our opponent's already played Lightning Strike, Ionized Teferi. What do you suppose? And they got the answers? Well, I think it's safer to go with spells. Then uh, try to maximize velocity in Enigma Drake. We can drop off the Arclight Phoenix. We can play a land. We can shock your Teferi. No more games. We can lightning strike your Teferi. I won't let you. Do you want me to phase you out of time? <laughs> He's a very grumpy guy. Very grumpy Teferi. And here comes the arc lights. Take that Teferi. And if our opponent taps out again, we're threatening Crackling Drake maximize velocity shenanigans. Niv, huh? Ten instants or sorceries right now, by the way. This will let our opponent do one damage, but they're going to have to trade this away. No, I may need to cast those to bring arc lights back, so I'll drop off the land instead. It's too bad I don't have a Warlord's Fury or um, a Crash Through, something to give the Drake some trample. I could pump one of my other Drakes to do some extra damage. Unfortunately, it would make Niv uh, go off, so that's not a good idea. Niv would kill a Phoenix in response to casting a Maximize Velocity here. And the opponent can't bear to chump block with Niv and concedes the game instead. Oh my. Oh my. Rona. Well, that's awkward. Five islands in the deck, three of them pitched to your opener. All red spells. <laughs> Doesn't get much more awkward than that. Goodbye. The right mana, the right amount of lands to spells ratio. Wrong colors. Okie dokie. Hmm. I don't think that's how I win the game. On the draw, I think that will be too slow. And I already have some creatures. I'll play the tapped red source in case I draw another red source. Maybe there's a world where I just want to cantrip, cantrip. Whoa.
what an God, these draws are weird. Two straight, arc lights off the top. But for once, I can't discard them. Well, Fall? Are you sitting over there with an Assassin's Trophy deciding whether or not to blow up my land? That would be stupid. And yeah, what the heck are these hands? Try again. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. All right. Land off the top. You are certain to die, but we gotta start this party somehow. After just enough thinking, we have a syncopate. All right. First creature down. Unreal. Just unreal. This could still get saucy. I can enter tapped because I don't have a use for it. Sultai super counter spell everything, huh? Let's see if they run Vraska. Or nothing. What do you think? Do they play more syncopates? They almost certainly play Vraska's Contempts and things like that. I just don't know if or when I'm ever going to get to play these like out of the graveyard. So I think I just have to launch them and make my opponent have more exile stuff. They might have it, but do they have all of it? You gonna do something? No. All right. Watery Grave. Tapped. I bet you say go. <laughs> Again? How many syncopates? How many Vraska's Contempts? Okay, that goes to the graveyard, which means I'm going to hang on to my spells. Since I might be able to get that arc light back. I'm going to save this till next turn. It's one of the counterintuitive things that you do with the deck. And since the opponent didn't have it last time... I'm going to pay two life to have this on the battlefield, though. They do draw a Syncopate or a Vraska's Contempt. I want the option to Lightning Strike my Phoenix into the graveyard. All right, something's happening with the Phoenix on the stack this time. I guess they drew another Syncopate, but see how playing that land kept my opponent from using their Chemister's Insight this turn? It might matter. It's a, it's a little thing, but it could matter. All right, well, now we have spells, and I guess I want to play those before I play the Crackling Drakes and get back one of my arc lights, one of my lovelies. Since the other two got rudely exiled by somebody with the nerve to draw three copies of Syncopate. Syncopate's good in the meta, I don't blame them. Can't blame them. And now the lands are fast and free. See if they care enough about a tormenting voice. Sure. It still uh, triggers the Phoenix. So do they keep their card? Nope. 
Another watery grave. They say no thank you. Let's get a bird. Bird. Hey, yeah. Do I do damage? I has dealt damage, maybe? Yes. I was starting to think I'd never deal damage this game. Discard the fourth syncopate. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Not bad. I like how you have to discard the fourth syncopate to draw two fresh cards. Actually, I don't see how that could make sense against this deck, but what do I know? All right, I'll try to put it in the graveyard and keep it from being exiled. The opponent may decide to fight me on that. They do, with Wizard's Retort. So just straight up cancel Sultai Control. All right, maximize velocity right here. Draw me a maximize velocity. Maximize. Okay. Well, these aren't. These are immune to sweeper, sort of, because Ritual Sid only kills the Drake, so they'll have to have Ritual plus a kill spell. Not unreasonable when you're when they're doing all this damage. We'll sacrifice the Enigma then. Annoying value hogs with their eldest reborns. Tormenting voice at a time when you don't need it, but I'll go for this Drake to try to draw that card. And draw that maximized velocity. No? How many counters do you need? Wizard's Retort, Sinister Sabotage, Syncopate. How many counters does somebody need? So the question here, do they find it? Do they find a way to kill this Drake? They have a Fountain of Renewal. And they pass? Oh my god. We got a shot. They only have one card. All right. If they have a counter spell, let's try to fire this lightning strike on their upkeep. And on the end step, here is the Fountain of Renewal on the stack. Let's fire away. Do they draw? I mean, they're a deck with probably 20 counters in it based on some of the things I've seen. At least 12. Can they draw one right here? They're down to two mana. Take that. Don't discard syncopates. When, when counters are winning you the game, but you are way ahead like that, don't discard counters to draw two cards with your Chemist's Insight. You'll probably draw two lands and be sad. Oh, man. On the draw. Maximize Velocity. That might not do anything. A Warlord's Fury, that could be anything. Yeah. What the hell? Let's learn. Let's learn stuff. Card kept on top. Golgari Guildgate, sweet. I think playing Golgari is sort of what you want. Let's uh, dig into the deck right away. Let's start making the drakes pop. But you don't want them to get Wild Growth Walker going, and if they're playing a turn one Seekers, then you feel okay about that. Discard the Velocity since we can bring it back and hit on the arc light. But can we get arc light into the graveyard? We have maximize, which can do it, which I think means next turn I can get my arc light on the battlefield and attacking by maximize targeting the squire. I just don't know if that's the good use for a maximize. Anyway, two damage and another squire. So it's a mopey little two drops. It's pretty much how we want it done. And they've been a Chupacabra. Ooh, we draw a Maximize. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's start with a fury. Let's see what we get. Chart of course. Well, that's interesting because now we can discard the Phoenix, but we can't bring it back this turn. We still have this option of using maximized velocity with the jump start to bring back the Phoenix and use it now. I actually let's opt and I, I I do think I'm going to do that. I think that's my play. I think that's what I want. I just want to start getting in right away. So here's what we do. We jump start maximum velocity. It also makes our opponent think that we no longer have um, maximum velocity available when in secret we do, which could come up big. And we get back our arc light phoenix and attack our opponent. And let's start clocking them. The deck is a racing machine. We may not have run, won a race earlier against um, whatever black, green, no, against whatever green deck that was, but normally it's a racing machine. We can even potentially ignore Vraska over here. We could also just get it dead. I mean, Vraska can gain one life, but if I attack it with a Phoenix, it's like it gained three life. It's not like it's going to blow up anything I have here. So let's go like this. K2 life. Play a Drake. And there's the land so we can go maximize velocity Drake next turn. If we so choose. Our opponent gonna plus. Looking for the gain one, draw one, I'm sure. No? Doesn't even gain a life. Interesting. And leaves up mana. Well, going for lethal is unlikely to work. I just feel well, if my opponent had a way to remove the Drake, wouldn't they have played it? Wouldn't they have played it so they could attack with the squires? Feels like they should have. So here is the velocity. Let's go for it. Resolves. Kill him. All right. There you go. Play around nothing. <laughs> the, the, the read was that the coast was a little bit clear, and it was. Oh, man. Man, I really want to keep this hand. But we could just flood out. But it has two of our key cards. Hmm. I don't know. I don't I don't know if this is a keepable hand, but when your deck is so many spells and so few lands. And the shock. The shock on the draw tells me I might be able to kill my opponent's first threat, which is kind of pretty important. And I wonder if I just save these to bring the phoenix back when the time comes. Mm, I think I'm supposed to try to be trying to jumpstart the deck. I think we gotta get the deck going. Can't be sitting here doing nothing, right? Opponent on double blue to open. I'm going to pay the two life to have this available in case my opponent does play a miscloaked herald or something. It's also pretty effective bluff sometimes. Hmm. Full control mode so it doesn't skip my opportunity. But yeah, we're going to shock that away. Playing the opponent of creatures is a bad idea in, against this deck. If they have nothing to enchant with Curious, Obs Curious Obsession, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, 
Okay. May I chart a course, please? Resolves. I will drop off this phoenix. And I will save my spells for next turn to go with the phoenix. Trickster returns. And here comes some pain. Opponent with a chart, of course, of their own to draw two because they played it after combat. And they have Wizard's Retort available if they want to use it. We can triple spell. We would have to maximize velocity and maximize velocity discarding Phoenix and crash through. I actually think that's good, but the problem is we don't have another red source, so I'm debating whether or not to start with the crash through and try to find it. So let's see what happens. Oop, didn't get there. Well, we get to throw an Enigma Drake into a counter spell, most likely. And there it is. The, the, the pleasure, the pleasure of throwing that Enigma Drake into the counter spell. Beating's condensing. The Tempest is here with counter available, I'm sure. Well, let's see if this can happen. Oh, no counter spell. Unfortunately, we still can't play um, our spells because we have too many islands. So, all the red cantrips, but no way to cast them. Exclusion Mage being brutal here. Feeling it. All right, well, we'll try again, I suppose, to get our arc lights back, since that's the best way we can get back in the game. There's a mountain. We could also play the Enigma Drake, but we're just dead. So, we have two arc lights down here who could be blocking. But they but blocking the Tempest Shin isn't very good, and we don't have enough spells to get it back again next turn. Still. Alright. Blow up the wizard as it reduces casting costs. Cast maximum velocity, target your exclusion mage. Get back the Phoenix, and the Phoenix. And no attacks. We're gonna be kicking back for a minute, friends. We're gonna hope our opponent ran out of gas somewhere. The double block is super risky, but my opponent's taking so long, I think I would try it here. We have double Enigma Drake for next turn anyway, and the opponent took so long, I'm going for it. If they have a bounce spell here, it's bad, but they should. They, I think they would have played it. Okay, they're going to use Dive Down. That's, that's really good too. I don't know why they didn't then send the Exclusion Mage. I guess you could say this is what they wanted, but fortunately I've got the Enigma Drakes ready to go. And the opponent could be dead next turn if we play Crackling Drake and maximize velocity and they don't have enough blockers. And they do pass the turn. Could it be? Let's find out. Does this resolve? It does. And there's a scoop. They see it. The opponent's taken 20. Unbelievable. So another hand, we're on the play. No removal spells, but Tormenting Voice in Phoenix is really hard for me to turn down. Let's see how it goes. I'm 
component in the tank on this one. I could always rub the head of a gargoyle. Pass the time. Pelt Collector is here. All right, Tormenting Voice, Discard, Arclight, Phoenix. Go deck, go. Gonna need another land. Does the Pelt Collector get pumped? Second Pelt Collector, you. And Elves, oh my, this is scary. Oh my. So I could, I could chart a course and Enigma Drake. I could Enigma Drake. Enigma Drake could race this. Like just because of the sheer amount of cards we can put in the graveyard. Not to mention if we untap with it next turn and can find one more land, we can also get back a phoenix and start bashing in. But shocking the elf, I think we want to race. I might be crazy, but I think I want to race. And right now a harpooner can't kill it. And let's see what our opponent has. Is it a null hide? Something huge and scary. Song of Freilies. Okay, that's interesting. And a null hive, oh God. All right, I said I wanted to race, now I have to prove it. Now we have to prove that we're that good. So I need to hit a land off of this tormenting voice or this chart, of course. I'm not sure what I want to discard, really. Maximize velocity, maybe, but, so I'll use the chart, of course, instead. That's not a land. That's not a land, friends. That is absolutely brutal. That is absolutely disgustingly brutal. But I said we were gonna race, we can't stop. All right, we'll have to figure out how to do 14 next turn. beef. Alright, what do I need? I need to, like, chart a course into land and phoenix. There's the land. It was one card away, my friends. It hurts so bad. That's not a phoenix. So I need to discard a spell to pump the drake as much as I possibly can. I need to shock the face. And when I bring back the maximized velocity, I need to target my drake and discard another spell so that the drake is as big as it can possibly be. Eight. Down to one? Oh man. It stings. It stings. It burns right here. All right. Let's see what we get for the prizes. All right. So this is where it ends at five wins, three losses. Thank you very much for watching the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.